promptly 8.30. All right, now we get promptly 8.30. <laughs> Um, first thing I want to tell you is we had that regional public health group and since we didn't have a coordinator all year there's money left over so each county is going to get five thousand dollars to spend but we can't they were just going to cut us a check but we can't do that anymore so we have to spend it and get them the um, invoices so sounds like government yes yeah. so anyway um, there's only certain things you can do with it I, or uh, emailed a gal at the state yesterday, and of course she's out of the office, on exactly what we can and can't buy. One thing we can do is upgrade computers, and we haven't done that for a few years. So I got a quote from Randy on redoing almost all of them, except the WIC computer, which isn't mine. It belongs to the state. Um, so you just multiply that by three, probably. One laptop replacement and three upgrades to the desktops. I don't know how much it comes. It's not $5,000. I know you can't buy a vehicle, and I know you can't do construction with this money. Really? Yeah, I'd really like to buy a vehicle because that heater's not working in the blazer. <laughs> so, another another yeah. discussion sometime. So anyway, um, that's one thing we're going to do, I think. That's all right, you got it. Because we have to do it by June 15th. It has to be in by June 15th because that's the next reporting period. So um, when I hear back from Jamie at the state, I'll see what else I can spend on. It has to be like for infrastructure or supplies. And I've got supplies on the fourth floor we're never going to use, I hope. That's true. And so I'd like to use something that we could get something we can actually use. That's the first thing. Um, second thing is, I don't know if you would, do you need a set-off training coming up? I had, um, remember a while back when somebody brought in a card and we checked it and, um, what the heck is that? Anyway, um, checked it and it looked like it was still current but a wedding we had to write off like $500. Mm -hmm. Well, it happened to us again to where they changed to Medicaid and they didn't tell us even though it looked like it was good. So I had to write that off too. So I, you know, for that amount I'd send them to set off because I'm sure they'll get a big chunk for their, um, what do they call that, earned income credit. Yeah. So I don't, I, did, I used to send them to, from EMS there, and I can't remember how I did it. So I didn't know, I might go to the training or send some of them. What are you frowning about? <laughs> well, I would. What? The set off. Yeah. The you state mean, set off. Right. You send okay. this into the to state. Collect, to collect. Oh, and then oh, they put a lien right. on their income tax yeah. return. It, I still get the ones. Yeah, because I still get their notices on June. I still get the stuff. It comes to me instead of her. I just forward it on. All right. Now, what else? What else is that? That's all about the 5000 Okay. I have an executive session for, I don't know, 20 minutes for uh, personnel. I want to finish that. For subject matter. Personnel. Personnel. Does that, that count? Non-elected personnel? Yeah, there you yeah. go. Non-elected. That's right. the word. To discuss what? Employment. 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 Opportunities. Or I would move that we go into executive session for 20 minutes to discuss employment of non-elected personnel for 20 minutes. A second. Motion to second. <coughs> executive session for 20 minutes for non-elected personnel. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Budget. Um, the only increase is the salaries, which we discussed earlier in the year, and they were approved in the minutes on those dates that I mentioned for Beth and I. And then a $50 increase Oh, in my education and training line item, because my, uh, actually it's more than $50, that's, that's incorrect, yeah, sorry about that, I didn't, I didn't prove it very well. Uh, our uh, Telenet classes have gone up to get, so that we can get better speakers and educators. 
So instead of 50, it's yeah. what? 110. Wow. 2000 it looks like yeah. um, his fuel by 250 everything else pretty much stayed the same so I mean he tried to cut where he could it looks like CEO of SDSI, uh, Jerry Maddox, board member, Brad Brock, our quality insurance manager, and our drug bank office. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The request this year changed up just a little bit because the column with the CDO administration, their last, well, for many years, we, we've had that at $8,889 per county for a total of $160. We got cut a little bit over 11 percent last year in our administration from the state of Kansas. They're looking at last I saw, and I don't know what's happening up there right now. I mean, different reports. <laughs> but 
but they're looking at another eight to ten percent cut for us this year. Now, in years past, that total of 160 that we asked for from the counties, we rarely used half of it, and that what we didn't use got put into the local finance plan and paid out to providers. So, but what we're looking at this year is we're probably going to need that the 186, 660. When that changed to the 10,370 per county. I took the request for population down, so the total request is relatively the same. There, there's a few buck dollars difference, but not much. But what that did, in effect, then changed the request on a lot of counties slightly. So for Stafford County, there, the 10,370, the 20,482 request for population comes out to 30,852, and you can see the last year the 2015 request was 30,077 dollars. So it did change it just a little bit. And of course, these are the 18 counties that we serve. The request we have from those counties, and to the far right hand side there, what we requested last year, as well as what we received. And at any point in time, you got a question, just ask, and I'll do my best to answer. The next page shows how those, those funds were used in our local finance plan. The 2014 numbers, the transportation subsidy is the biggest by far, and again, it will be again this year, 2015, we'll give you the projected amount we expect to spend. We do have some folks that the adult services there you see, um, for this year we have budgeted $100,000, last year's fell over the eighty-three. Those are folks that, in, in, in the state of Kansas, when we do eligibility determination, an individual might be determined eligible, but they're not eligible for the HCBS Home and Community Based Service Waiver, or Medicaid Waiver. If that's the case, they're what we call a Tier 0. Because the Tier 1 through <coughs> Tier 5 are folks, that's reimbursement rates that the providers get paid. The Tier 1 is a higher rate, Tier 5 is the lowest rate. Tier 0 is not Medicaid Waiver eligible and there's no funding for them. There used to be state grant funds, but there's no longer that. So we do use some local money to serve folks that are eligible for services, but not eligible for the waiver. And we do a needs-based assessment on those individuals to just see how many hours a week they might need, which might not be very much. In, in many cases, <coughs> it's not, but it does, it does help them keep them in the, uh, in the community. It might be help with budgeting, might be help with meal preparation, or whatever it may be there that, in that needs assessment. The next four pages are the local finance plan from June, January 1, 2015 to June 30th, 2015. We look at this every six months because the two funding streams that go into our local uh, finance plan come from the county mill and state aid. Of course, they're on different fiscal years, so we're going to be looking at it in June. We do, we do ask for input from providers. And recently, we, we really haven't got much. We may have some changes that we do, but anyway, in June and November, we look at this local finance plan with our providers. And if we need to make adjustments or tweaks to it or changes to it of some sort, we'll do it then. <coughs> There's a page that shows all of our providers, the city in which they're either located, their corporate office, or the city in which they, in some cases, it may just be their corporate office, they, they are. For instance, in the 13 counties in the southwest corner, we may have some of these organizations, says Bird City, but they actually provide services also in the liberal throughout the 13 counties. Same thing here in the five counties, the Great Bend offices, uh, those, are, those, are those organizations provide services throughout the five counties. But it's mainly located, once again, in Great Bend, Garden City, and Liberal, and that's one of the reasons, if you look at that first page again, we do ask for some extra money from those three counties. We, we, to them, we don't necessarily get it, but we still continue to ask that money. Seward County is one that really has stepped up as far as comparing the request to what, what they give is, is, is much closer to that than, than Barton and Finney. But we work with them. We do the best we can. We, we make the request and we see what, what they have to do for us. There's a next page there that has the uh, duties and responsibilities. The SDSI performs as a community developmental disability organization or CDDDO. <laughs> the first paragraph, usually why I've come here and said this thing's not changed, the only thing is it changes the numbers. I didn't change the numbers this, this year. I changed the wording a little bit. 
the reason I did not change the numbers is we couldn't get accurate numbers. Last year, a little over a year and a half ago, the state of Kansas changed the database. It was called BASIS, and I couldn't tell you what those, you know, B-A-S-I-S stood for something. Now it's <coughs> KMIS, K-A-M-I-S, Kansas something management information system. We cannot pull accurate numbers out of here. In fact, the other day we tried to pull some things for consumers that we were doing some work on. I don't know if it was the annual functional assessments or quality assurance. We couldn't get social security numbers. I mean, it's just stuff. Right now, we've had problems with this. I know that we're serving more folks than we did last year. I know that we've had folks come in off a waiting list. Um, we've had folks that have come in on a crisis request. We've had a few pass away, but not that many. When we pulled the numbers, for instance, the 650, approximately 650 received, it was 599 according to the database, and I know that's not right. And I know we've not decreased. And, and anyway, just want to make sure you understood that. Uh, I wish I could tell you what those numbers were today accurately, but but I don't know what they are. But I know they've not gone down. So those are last year's numbers. There's an organizational chart here. <coughs> Jerry Maddox is your, your representative on the board. Myself included, there's there's uh, 10 positions. One of them is open right now. The administrative assistant, he's right then. Brad's not heard me say this, so he's right here now. Because of the budget, and we don't, the unknown right now, we're not going to fill that position until we find out. We may not fill that position. Uh, it, it is a part-time position. It's 25 hours per week. Um, but with the te <coughs> technology we have between the, the smartphones, the emails, the voicemails, and the telephone system, you know, people can get in touch with us, so, and, and, and we can get back with them. Um, so that, that may be the case. It's just one of the realities of, of the budget in today. There's a page after that that shows the applications we've received for the year. Eligibility determination essentially is what this is. It goes back to 2005, the first full year that we had 18 counties, where we had these five counties over here around the Great Bend area. Um, the numbers there are going up and down. Don't know why they just do that. We used to have a waiting list down here below and show you what we have, but the state of Kansas is now doing that waiting list. So. It goes by the date that someone was eligible for services and they applied. <clears throat> so when they start going down, the, when money's available and they start going down that list, they'll just notify the CDO of the names and then we get in contact with the, with the individuals and tell them the funding is available to like start services. If they do, uh, then we present to them the options for case management, date residential, and so on. The last page is the map of the state of Kansas with the CDDOs. There's 27 CDDOs. In the legend here, we're number 21, the 13 counties in the southwest corner, and the five counties in central Kansas. Um, 21 of these 27 continue to provide services. There's a huge conflict of interest there that we've ad advocated for legislation to separate that so that um, if you're the CDDO, you're, you're determining the eligibility, so you're seeing the people first. You're doing the options counseling, which means that we're presenting the list of our providers that was earlier in the back uh, There's a huge amount of you're also providing services. The other thing here, when you look at this, with the administrative functions we perform, we've, again, we've advocated for not only separation of that CDDO, in other words, if you're going to be a CDDO, you cannot provide services. That's what we have been advocated for for over 10 years. And the other side of it, okay, as dollars become increasingly scarce, there's some efficiencies that could be happen here if you get some consolidation. I mean, we have our, our office, main office in Garden City, we have an office in Great Bend. We, we staffed that starting out with three people, then we went down to about two and a half positions. Right now we have two positions there. I mean, we can very well do that in other areas too, and they could very well do that in the other parts of the state and, and not have 27 members. There's a history behind that, the reason that it is the way it is today, but the reality of today is that, that it would probably, in our opinion, would definitely work better if we got a consolidated areas, maybe 11, I don't know what the magic number is, 6 to 11 of us that, that uh, could do these administrative functions for the state of Kansas. And with that, Jerry, 
Anything? Brad? Anybody? Well, the only thing I'd say is that everyone here knows me and, and I do the best job that I can for Stafford County. And uh, I think these people do uh, probably about 50% better than some part of the work I did when they did it. Just the way things are handled and everything. So <clears throat> I'm well pleased with their performance and what they extend with Stafford County. Probably only missed one or two meetings in the, all the years I've been going out there. And uh, some of them won't go out there because it's so far. But whether it's 127 miles or 136 miles, <laughs> it's only $4.95. <laughs> 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 we we, 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 we do pay mileage. We pay mileage. A hard time because the only thing we get from serving on the board is mileage. And I've turned in 127 miles ever since I started. And he sends out a little sheet, you know, saying how far he's going to travel to go to these meetings. And he had 136. Hours. That's our way of giving you a raise. So, <laughs> I, I, I got a new, a new chief financial officer meant to talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but but um, sometimes, as, it's, as, as the CDL, we also to remind me, we, we, we sometimes play referee because sometimes people don't play well together and between providers or individuals that are in services uh, we just have to do that sometimes and, and we have no financial interest whether a person is eligible or not we don't get paid more or less we have no financial interest if they're a tier one or tier five when we do the annual functional assessments because we get paid the same a CEDL who also provides services may have a financial interest. The managed care organizations in the state of Kansas, the three of them, definitely have a financial interest. So we're still going to argue the point that we do add value to this system. We are the ones, especially if we're independent and not provide services, because we can advocate for the individuals. And again, we have no financial interest one way or another. We get paid that CEDL admin, that's it, it's flat rate. We use some county mail, as I told you all in the past, and continue to, and that's it. That's what we get paid. So as far as individuals and services, our main focus is, are they getting the quality services or are they getting what they need? And we will advocate for those individuals, whether it's to the state of Kansas, one of the managed care organizations, or, or the provider themselves. We will do that. Uh, and again, we have no financial interest there. So that's one of the reasons also we think this, this needs to change. And, and as, as a... CDDO who does not provide services, we can definitely advocate for individuals, period, and try to do that. So, yeah. any questions you may have, I'll, again, I'll certainly try to answer. Well, Jerry, just thank you for your dedication yeah. and services. You're welcome. It's a long drive for him. Yeah. I left at 615 this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I was here early. Really it is nice life. to have a jury because we, in our CDO area, we've never had a rep from Rice County. No. In my career with SDSI, no. 11, no. almost 11 years, we've never been able to get anyone from Rice County to. How many is on your board? There's there's a capability of 18 because each county in, in our contract uh, with with counties with with so all one. One, one yeah, and our bylaws call for one from each county. That way, there's you know that equal representation from each of the counties. We've never gotten any from Rice County. One thing we have added, though, and I don't recall how many years ago, it's been maybe three or four years ago, video conferencing between our Garden City office and Great Bend office. It's just on, on the Internet. There's nothing special there. Uh, but we were able to get that done, and, and uh, it wasn't that expensive either to do it. So we can, in fact, we do at least weekly, if not more often, have, have meetings between the two offices with video conferencing. I've told that to Rice County. They don't have to travel to go to see if they don't want to. Jerry, for the most part, I think prefers the travel. Not true. Yeah, you've been up a couple times. For but we, we have conference. conducted a, a hey, at least one board meeting, did the video conference, and made it two. I don't recall. Two. Okay. Yeah. So it works. It's a, it's a little different with the board. Right. But I mean, we you know we just have never been successful in getting somebody from Rice County. And the thing I always explain to the counties when we have the opening is it doesn't have to be a family member or, or an individual involved in the you know, with IDD. 
Uh, it can be a business person, it can be a banker, it can be a, well, we have a couple, three or four county commissioners, I've had a CPA, uh, be an attorney, it can be anyone who's interested in just, we only have four meetings a year, so anyone who'd be interested, and again, we pay mileage, so. And thank you. And we just, yeah, yeah, because we got people, you know, traveling from a couple hours away, so, yeah, we, yeah. We have food there by 6, meeting starts at 6.30, and we're ready to go. Well, gentlemen, we do thank you for all you've done for individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities and helping us to serve them. And it does enhance the services. I think it does give the providers the ability to, to again, the main category is transportation, but, hey, to, to have a fleet or have a vehicle, or what, how, you know, some are small providers, some are large. What do they need as far as getting people to and from shopping excursions, entertainment, to and from if they're going to the day uh, service location or going to a job? So it does help out. We do appreciate it. Look forward to whatever you can do for us this next year. We'll see what the people brings us to. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, man. Have seen you forever. Yeah, it was fun. Yes. Yours? Let's see. Three and a half grandkids coming. Oh, yeah, I got well, three already, and then one of them's going to have a third. So. Where's my She's at Hayes. Well, she's home for the summer. Okay. But she'll be done this time next year. Just have rules. That makes it hard to know. Oh, God. Yeah, it is. It's, it is. It's tough. It is. When they come back. Try to do our best. <laughs> Yeah. Good seeing you, Carl. Nice seeing you. Take care. Thank you, Brad. Carl? He's kind of like Joe's briefcase. Oh, Joe's not kind His briefcase is open. He just took care of it. Well, kind of. Because Joe took it. He took my box. I'll get you a new one. Okay. Like Campbell Soup or. This kind of all grew from the budget, okay? <laughs> this is how this happened. That's scary. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, and then we'll probably stop in between here if that's all right and kind of go and hang out a little bit here. Okay, overall, it does. It is going to show right now what I'm proposing is is just a little over five percent of an increase. That's on the bottom right there. Um, uh, what I have the three pages is the actual what I'm proposing to you guys, and in the past years on the second page, this is our um, our fund that we have set aside for uh, equipment reserve, so to speak. That we put a little, need to put a little bit of our budget at the end of the year into this this here, and this is how we paid a lot of that for the plotter mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And then on the last page, um, the green numbers, uh, the the current hourly and 2015 budget, that 141,306 doesn't match the budget on the front. That's because we revised it. If you guys remember, you get when we when we changed down to Maryland. So that's that's actually what we pay right now, and so I wanted to show show you where it is going to be different from what we you approved originally, and then in the purple, the last two columns would be what we would be proposing for 2016, which would be 2% of that. Okay. So if we go back to the front, um, part of it would be uh, salaries. I went down line item by line item again. I tried to do this. Um, we're actually the, the gas, the fuel will come down a little bit, uh, mostly because of the prices and so forth. And mostly, some of the field checks that we're going to start doing is going to be with pictometry on there also. Uh, the phone, as we keep coming down, the meetings and traveling, uh, the dues and subscriptions. The last couple of years, we had the letters DLT, where I have AOS. DLT, that is our AutoCAD, that's our GIS system. Uh, this was zero. We, what we do is we pay a three-year period. That would actually be zero until 2017. Okay, where we're at now, and this is where I'm going to kind of vary now, because AOS is a, it's a, it's a company that, that 
that we've never used before, uh, but, but we're going to need some help with some mapping stuff. Uh, I think I told you guys, I think we was over in the, when I went at where the Mannix is. Um, anyway, what we're starting to see is we bought Autodesk back 15 years ago. It's the GIS system mm -hmm. that a lot of counties have done away with, and they went to that ARC editor or, what, or ESRI. What it is, it's a competitor of Autodesk, it's still a GIS system, it's just a lot better. We haven't converted because of the cost. Um, but what we're starting to see with things changing just in the last couple of years, and it's going to get worse, is uh, you guys are familiar probably with the, uh, the NG911 addresses that goes through the sheriff. We've had grants and we've paid RS Digital, I think, to do the 911 stuff, things like that. The, the NG911 does not work with Autodesk very well at all. Um, so that's a problem. The land use layers that I'm going to talk about, this is the soil types that as the NRCS updated, we have soil types coming out that we will not be using and we have soil types coming in that we will be using. They've been reclassified with uh, the soil rating plant growth to be exact. So the ones that we don't have, we're going to get, we have five going out that we won't use, that we used last year, we won't use this year. And when I say they, it's the soil types, that four digit number, four numbers. Uh, the new soils is the ones in color here. <laughs> and I don't even, even count them all. But there they are. Um, Autodesk does not work with this either, unfortunately, not very well. That's why we actually, and I would recommend today that we use that that, that I hire this company. They give us 25 hours for $2,500, so it's $100 an hour. Without a contract, it's $195 an hour. So we talked them down to that. I didn't sign here. We signed with this contract with Pawnee County a month ago. Uh, I didn't sign with all three counties because. I didn't know that much about this company. There is a, a lady in Russell and they're local and so forth. Um, they are good. They are. We're, we're pretty impressed what we're getting at Pawnee. Mm -hmm. um, they're actually, we're getting ready to do the data entry. Uh, nobody's come up with a way to change because what you do is say that was soils up there. That's not soils, but we have a lot more of those. You put that soil line and then you put the new soil on top of that, and then this company can go find those differences. What's hard is, we go by parcels, those layers are done by fields, by soil types. So there's a lot of calculations that be brought into this, and Autodesk doesn't read it. So this company, did it did work in Pawnee County, it's going to take a lot of data entry, but it is going to work. Uh, and it's going to actually work, I feel like, pretty slick. Um, my thought at first was to match these soil types up with the ones that are going out, with the ones that are coming in, and just simply write a query and replace soil type XYZ with ABC, which would work. It's not going to be accurate. Mm -hmm. And where we would where it would hurt is if we would go on to an appeal or something of that nature, or if a farmer comes in and say that new soil type I converted to is three hundred dollars an acre, but he has some soil part of that should be, and it would be two hundred thirty dollars an acre. They're going to complain about that. So it would get us by, but it's not real accurate for the county, to be honest with you. Um, if we go this other route with AOC, those layers would match, and then that new layer would become our layer on GIS. We won't put that layer on pictometry because nobody needs to see our soils. They can come into the office and do that. Uh, that's one soil that wouldn't go both ways. One layer, I should say. But I think, as much as I hate to spend that money, I, I think I have. I think we need to do that. Um, and what I would be requesting from you guys is if, um, because what we need to do, 
what we need to do is we also are going to redo our water ratio tables. Okay. So what that is is you remember the new soil types when we went, when we went from gallons per minute to water actually used water ratio. We did that two years ago. Okay. Now the water is you know is two years later and people is irrigated different. So if we don't update those water ratio tables, we're actually not appraising them the correct way. Because we would be using what they, the water ratio that they used back in 2012, which we know we used a lot more water then, than the last two years. So this program, this has to be done first, and then I'm gonna, we're gonna get the other report and then we have to go back and enter that for just the irrigation. Because what we need is we need the soils right first and the amount of acres in Orion correct first. Then we can use that report and then we, we can figure their water ratio table, what, what they used. So that's all that and also. So it's, it's, that, that's what we need to do actually. Um, and I guess the reason I have this second page in here is this is how I would like to pay for the contract, I guess, the $2,500. We have $3,940, and I would like to run, start this contract with AOS, and I can't really go get you, I'm just going to be honest with you, I can't really go get you any more bids. Uh, Reason being, I've worked on this. Uh, but other companies, I call uh, Kimball Math and a couple others, they don't do Autodesk. Do you think that 25 hours is going to be enough? Yeah, yeah, they use the bag. And, and what's going to be good about that is I, I would like to keep it at the 25 hours because they understand pictometry also and the 911 jam. What I would like to do is they took about 14 of the 25 hours at Pawnee County to do this. And so we would still have 11 hours or so if, if something comes up later in the year where we could call and use them. And if something comes up with pictometry or something like that, we could use them. If something comes up with the 911, we could use them, and we won't get charged additionally. And that's for a year time? Um, a year or, two, or, or until we so use it all. Okay. Yeah. You said, yes. So Carl, they did the soil and the water we in will. Pawnee County? Uh, no, we can do the water ourselves. Oh, okay. I don't, we know how to do that. Oh, okay. uh, I just have to get the report from the state. Uh, I request it on the, on the internet, and then they send it. And we fill it. It takes two big books, and that'll do. What we did, we we already know the time frame. It took two months of data entry last time, two years ago. This year is going to take two months of data entry. But but we got we we have to do it. Uh, I've contacted the state. I'm not going to rely on the state. I don't feel comfortable. Uh, the two ladies that knew how to do this are both retired. They don't have anybody on staff that knows how to do this. AOS knows how to do it. And if we're going to do it, I want to do it exactly and correct. That way, somebody comes in, boom, we have it. We do. And it's $2,500. And we do have the 3940 that we can do this. Now, in the budget, I did put them in 2016 just in case something else comes up. Um, I, I'm not saying that I'm going to need that. Okay, I'm not saying that we're going to do that. I have to, have to use that. I'm just putting it there because we would be short here then to pay for it. Just, and, and so that's why that jumped up to $2,500. Um, everything else either stayed the same or pretty well went down except for that line and then the way salaries. Um, what I did on the bottom, because I know I put you guys in the bind with pictometry, and I'm, I apologize for that because of what that cost, but I, I did a capital outlay down on the bottom for 2017, 2017, 18, and possibly 19. But in 2017, we, we, we're still, we're paying that second term of pictometry. And this is my thinking is, you see the word ARC editor there? It would cost our, our county about $15,000 to totally convert out of Autodesk into ARC view or ARC editor. 
uh, it will be faster with with uh, the future of pictometry. It'll be faster with the 911 gen, and it will actually be a lot more accurate for anything else that I don't even know is coming. Because the city, the, the, I mean the county, the states, the the nation is going with our view, and all of this is falling behind. We've had a lot, I mean, we, we've used it, it's just the new technology is showing where we kind of thought Autodesk was going. I didn't want to convert because of the cost, but if we don't, um, we'll have to go with more contracts to, to go get that help. So that's what that was there, the 33000 The 2018 would be the, the third and final payment of pictometry, and then I put in that printer because we bought that in 2011, and we keep that about seven, eight years. Uh, that cost us about $7,500. And then 2019 is up in the air. Right now, we bought that Blazer in 2005. I'm not saying I want a new vehicle. I'm just saying it would be extremely getting older. We're fine on mileage. It's just we may be in that in that range. So, but. That's where I'm at on that. Okay. Um, so why would we consider doing the art editor sooner? Well, if that's where it's moving, why would we not put our dollars there? I, I don't have the money there though, and I feel already bad about big commentary coming to you guys and getting that money um, and kind of putting us in a bind there. Um, I think in in two one thing that in 2017. Because my game plan is not to re-sign with Pawnee County. You guys remember, 2017, I have to sign a contract if you guys still want me, want me here. Um, I think that would fit them better at that point to where January 7, 2017, get this art view in motion and so forth. And what's nice is we have kept the three counties together because the three counties do work together with phone calls i don't know how much money they probably save just talking amongst themselves um, and i thought that would be a good time for them to train a new person at that time and i thought that'd be a good time for us to budget and they go get it at that time does that answer well it does i just i mean that's what i do it now. you know well, I, you know if we're going to keep throwing money after Old equipment that our old programs that are going to be obsolete in three years. And and one thing about the auto desk is, um, I talked about a three year. We've already paid for three years in advance, and it runs out April 2017. That was another thing. That was just two things, and all three counties had the same time period. Yeah. So we would go ahead and use them. Um, we just have maybe AOC help us. AOS with some things on some conversions, this, that, and the other. But I think at that point, then we're we'll leaving and, and we'll move on. That would give me a little time too, to be honest with you, to get maybe a couple bids on the, uh, because we could get different bids on the uh, uh, our, our editor, on the Ezra, the new program. We could get RMS Digital on a great band. You know, that could be, that would be convenient to have somebody that close. Uh, AOS is close. Kimball mapping was out of Manhattan. So we could get some bids on that to get to get that price down as low as we could. I don't think, and I probably didn't explain that, I don't think we're going to throw any more money out at all the desk because we've already paid for it. We can't get that back. We did drop our, uh, we did drop our uh, maintenance already. I've already, we've already went through that process. We're dropping that. We're not. Because what we found out with Autodesk is they, their maintenance is, they look and see if their system's working. If their system's working, they don't know anything about what we do. So they're no help. They say, well, the system's working correct. The layers are working correct. Well, why do we have errors? Well, we don't know that. That's not our job. I said, well, okay, then we're, we're done. So, that's, what we, that's what I did on there. Um, yeah, that's the budget part. <laughs> <laughs> okay.
you want a motion for your $2,500? Do you have a contract to sign? Or? Yeah, I haven't called them yet. I think they're wondering why I'm not. I haven't called them with the two counties. This is the, the other two counties. This is what they have is they have a contract here, and and then this is a bigger. This is the contract where it breaks down what they're going to do and what they don't do and what we do on the last page. But I can call them first. I think. So and tell them we're going to okay. do this, and then I can bring it in maybe next week if you guys want to do this. Uh, they're actually, if I call them today, they will actually start working on this for now for Canada because we can't start this until I certify Anita, but yet we're still going to certify early. I'm going to try to do it today because we need this extra money this year. Is we typically certify the first week of June or the second week of June. We need this extra month. And we can't do any of this data entry until we certify. And then I roll over to 2016. So we'll be working on 2016. So yeah, there would be two contracts here. And this this here just has a plan. And one thing that I was, another thing I was impressed with ALS on is they send us everybody that's going to work in your county on your county stuff, and they have it. They're, they're designated about 10 people to staff our county. It's pretty impressive what they're going to do for us and the time frame. So, um, so we need, you need this sign now? I, I don't think so. I think I can bring it back in. I'm going to call them first and see, make sure everything's legit. And that, because this is a little long. I don't know. This is January 2009. Uh, January 21st. And so I don't know if they need to change some dates on this or not. Um, but the price won't change. They just might need to change some dates. So if you, if I guess if, you, if, if that's okay with you guys, I'll pursue that. And go on there. Okay. And your salary, is that 2% increases over the for January 1st. And on that, on that, uh, occur on that last page, it would show kind of where, where they would go then. From that 818 and where we were at to like 1818. But the 1818 is where we moved. That's where we moved. Yes, yes. And that's why that number doesn't, doesn't comply with this number on the front page. Because this is my, this is actually what I gave you budget on last year, okay. and this is what we changed in the middle of the year. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's why those two won't pass. Okay. Okay. Can you get on the budget for now? Okay. All right. I didn't know to be continued. Okay. We'll see how much you start by. Okay. <laughs> this here, if you guys want to look at this, this is just giving you an update. We're going to over to zoning now. That's that cell tower up there that we've been waiting on. We had that, uh, they asked for that extension. This is the tower up on Spangin' Brooks property. It's not in, it's not in use yet, but they're getting real close. So I just wanted to show you that. That's good. How tall is that? It's, uh, it's the same 199 feet. Yep. On there. So it's, uh, so it is there now. So it's not it's not operational. It's not yet. Not yet. You said two weeks, and that was probably a week ago. Okay. I stopped by there one day. Oh, you did, Jim? Yeah. I think the same day as I put that up, we're going to put the other one up. Okay, and then this here is, this here is, we had a zoning meeting Monday night, and this is the resolution that the zoning board I'm going to bring to you guys. Uh, case number BZA C 1501 is actually for a, a tower also. It gives you the data description and uh, the board actually, the zoning commission actually granted it. And so I just bring that to you and if you guys kind of give me your approval, then I'll send this to the company. And then, then this one here is done. And it's going to be just like that tower. It's going to be a so, uh, yep. Just under. 
It was a good meeting. It was a good meeting. I thought you'd be Good, good, good. Um, they asked him, you know, we've, we've, we've had a couple other tires, so there wasn't a lot of discussion, really. I think it was just they picked, they picked his brain a little bit to see what he knew. Um, but it, it's good. I think what we're going to do is I, I, I tried to uh, get a hold of Farrah uh, Hoverman up there at uh, Seward. Uh, her phone didn't activate or invalid. And so I, uh, her term was up April 2015, and she was the only one not there. So I think what we do is if you have a contact, we're sending you a letter to see if she's done or, or not. Do you see her? Will you ask her? Do you mind? And if you know, and if she is, that's fine. Um, and then we we can we can find someone else. And for you guys, because we need somebody up there. But just as a reminder, they don't have to be in the city. The only person that has to be in the city is the one person from Hudson. They have one person has to be in the city, which is now Jenna. Um, so, but yeah, if we can find somebody up there, whether that be people that would be I introduced them after the meeting. Um, we introduced them to pictometry uh, and what they was all they're all excited about it. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to put them. Uh, Maryland's working on their passwords right now, and we're going to put them on an email, and so they can get in. And so what I can do is we can start doing zoning uh, beforehand with the zoning commission, where they can get in and look at that. And they was all, I thought they were all pretty, pretty happy about that. Well, and, and where this would be an advantage also is if a storm would come through, zoning would really kick in. And then they could actually get on and look and see what what happened. Yeah, yeah. And all that also. So uh, I think we're we're gonna benefit with that being on this. Yeah. And we'll just put them under the zoning administration. Yeah. yeah. And he, like I said, it's just it's looking, it's looking and seeing what's what's going on. See what there. Be interesting. Watch the check out. His wife was there. Anita was, she <laughs> was there. Yeah. She came up. She actually, if I look under Marion right here, it'll be her. It's her handwriting. Yeah. Matter of fact, the email is Anita. Yeah. 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 Did you get a copy of this? Did I get a copy? Yeah. No. Because you typed this up for me. Do you want this here? Yeah. So you can... Is that a copy? Or is yeah. No. Yeah. I've got that for you. Uh, so, Carl, do we have to adopt this resolution or just. Not really because it's a conditional use. I just always bring that to you. If it was a special use, you guys have to approve. They send the recommendation, and you guys have to do that. So, but I just like to you guys always do well. You should be. I know that. I'll take that in real quick. Okay. Okay. Our pictometry meeting. Um, our on-site pictometry meeting, and I'm going to send out a letter to the cities, and, and hopefully, then Nina will send it out to all the department heads, uh, and then the zoning we invited to the zoning board. It's actually going to be on, on June 2nd. It's going to be from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., and it's going to be at the high school's IT room. But the advantage on that is uh, they've got a projector, and then they have the other computers. He actually wants the people to get on it. He wants to look and see how people are interacting, what level they're at, where the cities are at. So that's why he recommended using a, where these computers. And the school approved us doing that within two hours. So, uh, June 2nd at 9 a.m. And you guys are more than invited you know, on there. Uh, we're going to come in the, the north doors and then we'll go down to the high school IT. Um, Josh was very professional. He, he done a good job. He acted on it. So, I'm really happy with, with the school. On there. Okay, got one more thing. <laughs> Neighborhood revitalization, you guys. Time, time's flying. This is something else you got to do this year. Okay, if you notice on the brochure, December 31st, 2015. It's 
So what we do, so as, as this program sits right now, at the end of the year, they make this evaluation stop. The program is done. If you're in the seven years, nobody can reapply. Do you guys want to renew? Do you want me to start working on the interlocal agreements with the cities, the schools? Do you want this again? Um, do you want it for a longer period? I, I don't know if you want to go for long because we know. Uh, four years is long. I think it's long. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and what we do at this point is this would be this is when we actually fine tune this here our, our plan. You know, to be honest with you, I still like the seven years. I still like our our, our threshold. I really do. Um, you know, if you get lower than that, um, we're going to do a lot of paperwork for a little bit of refunds. That is what it amounts to. And we're going to be more of an NRP office than So anyway, so if you guys, I always, if you guys are happy with this, uh, or if you want to do it, I'll start working on the interlocal agreements with everybody that participates with us, the schools and the, the cities, and then we're we're having this on. As long as we have it in place by, you know, the first couple of weeks of January, to be honest with you. But I'd like to, in the past, I'd like to try to get this revised well before, like, November uh, of this year. You are. I'd leave it four years. We benefited from it. So we would be going from 2016 to the end of the year. Okay. Okay. Like I said, we're going to try to, I'm going to try to certify the day, um, the real estate. Um, I certified at Pawnee County uh, Friday. The good news is, I guess, for the county is uh, with the ag values, they did gain $10 million in appraised value, which is $3 million of assessed value. Um, I don't know what's going to happen here for sure, but I'm going to say it's going to be comparable. Uh, they didn't lose as much oil as we did though here. So. Will that make up for the oil? Probably not here. Probably not here. Uh, we have we have too much too much oil. So we're still going to keep there. Um, you know, I don't know if you if you guys kept up with that. There's a Senate bill that I can't remember 302 the excise tax for three dollars per acre. Uh, I talked to the state Monday and they said somehow that thing is gaining in speed. And which would be if you own the border of the ground, it'd be. Just under five hundred dollars. I can't believe that uh, that low producing field that you're catching these steam. Well, we're working on it. Um, the wind. We won on the wind. Really? Well, they haven't signed it yet, but, but tentatively, what they're proposing is, and uh, they put in the ten years, and yeah. So. And that was the one they were buying off. Yeah. Um, I do think I think Kurt said I think Kurt was right. I think we, we got stuck with the oil with the wrong person. Uh, and you mentioned her name up there, KFC. Yeah. And I think she actually after talking to Randall a couple I think she is what hurt us on the on the oil. I think you did that real much. Yeah. So you have those numbers next week then too that you guys that you wanted to start playing with. Nita, I don't think you're gonna you're not gonna do nothing with it yet though, are you? What? The certification. I can't. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll bring mine in to where you guys can see it and then it will it won't be hard coded in stone, but it'll give you an idea what's happening. I'll just bring you to one page comparing fourteen to fifteen. I mean yeah, fourteen to fifteen, so I can do sixteen. There you go. <laughs> Don't do 2020. Yet. We are going to work on that, aren't we? <laughs> <clears throat> okay, that's I think. Are we good, or do you guys have anything to for me? Uh -huh. I'm okay. I'm okay with it. Okay. All right. Well, I appreciate you guys' support. You guys, you guys make it a lot easier uh, supporting us and and, and and giving us the money that we need. I really appreciate that. All right, I'm going to get out of here again. So, June 2nd is spectacular.
you say it's the time for that high school. And then we'll get a we'll get a thing out and then I'll get to you. might put that on the notes on your agenda too. Got it? Well, from 9 to 12. He said it'll take three hours. He said it'll take Okay, thank you. You can sit by Marion. Yeah, I'll help Marion. Look on his face and just like that. And then Anita rushed over. Are you okay? So cute. Yeah, I can imagine. He just had that deer in the headlight look. <laughs> Hi, how are you? I'm a surprise visitor. You are. <laughs> how are I've you seen doing? You for a while. <laughs> well, we talked about the M We're going to talk about RNS Digital and uh, 911 addressing real quick. Okay, I'm Bruce RC with RNS Digital Services. A great day. And uh, we did for the NG911 uh, statewide program that's going on. We did. We were contracted by 911 coordinating council and uh, Jeff to remediate the 911 data, the GIS data. We have that's complete and it's 100% compliant with the new system, the new program. Uh, we have to maintain that data. The data has to be maintained at this point. Uh, so moving forward, we had a uh, maintenance contract with Stafford County in the past, and I waived that at the first of the year because we were getting ready to revamp the centerline file. Really, we were getting ready to redo the centerline file, go through it line by line. So I talked to Gene uh, down there. I just told her, no sense double dipping on this, and we pick it back up in June once we got this uh, centerline file done. So um, this is the, uh, what, we've, and what we've done, we lowered the price actually, uh, the yearly price on that. We have a uh, more streamlined system now, which isn't going to take as much as our time, and hopefully won't take as much of the county time when there's new addresses, annexations, uh, road closures. That's what we have, that's what we have to do for the so, um, the yearly fee on that it will be twenty eight hundred dollars. It was thirty four hundred last year or two years ago. Um, there's a website development on there that and that's a one time cost of twelve hundred. And then, in the process of cleaning up the uh, centerline file, the M site which is the master street address. Uh, and what that is, is it, it's kind of hard to explain, but it's a database when a 911 call comes in and AT&T or CenturyLink or whoever receives that call, it goes out to that database and locates the telephone number and, it, and then sends it back to the computers to route the calls. So, in the process of cleaning up that MSAC, there were uh, 589 records that had to be added to the uh, MSAC. Uh, that that can be paid for through the 911 grant, the grant funds that you get on a yearly basis. So it won't be paid. The coordinating council would not uh, fund us to do that through the NG911 funds, but they would fund it through the yearly funds for 911. So, and that's a one-time fee of $1,767. So the first year is $5,767. And then years after is $2,800. So, and we don't really anticipate. And what's that, what that's going to do is uh, we have a website that Gene will log into. It's a GIS mapping website. She'll uh, go to the area where she needs an address or search for nearby addresses, and she click on either side of the line, pop up, and give her the next available address for that area. Then, once she hits the save button, it emails us. We'll verify that address is correct and send her back a uh, notification saying that 
this is a good address. Um, you can tell whoever requested the address to move, to move on with it. So it's like double check. It's kind of a double check on that. The city, and as we were going through this, and really when we went through it, five and six, I think it was, uh, the city kind of addresses kind of the way they want to. <laughs> they have some areas that have a, uh, they're outside the range, the address range, so the 500 block across the street, they may have 700 addresses over there, so 701 to 7 something, and we can handle that inside the GIS, but our hopes are that if they use this website, because they'll have the same login, and they'll have the same ability, that if everybody worked on the same map, we eliminate some of those problems. So, um, and then we'll take care of the state requirements for uh, sending the GIS data back to the state so that it gets into the statewide uh, map that in turn will be displayed in this fashion. So, that's that's pretty much what. So, <laughs> I know that's a mouthful. <laughs> well, will that, but, help, will, will that help the people on Garmin's and stuff get the right address when they log in? You know, it's a horrible mess out here. Right I'm, and, here's, and here's the thing with Garmin: we get these calls all the time, and counties get these calls all the time. The thing with Garmin is they hire a third-party uh, vendor to collect the data and we had contacted them and actually the GIS guy in Ford County now worked at Garmin so he kind of knows how that how that works but uh, trying to get Garmin to uh, accept the data from the counties but we can't sell the data the data is yours we can't sell it without your permission uh, some counties we are the GIS coordinator for and we have uh, agreements with them to uh, distribute the data and they get a portion of the funds and we get a portion of the funds but other than that we don't we don't give your data to we don't give you the addresses or any of the data to, to anybody without uh, the county's permission well, it's sure the you permission to give it to Garmin. yeah I don't know how, but you know we've tried <laughs> So they Trust can end me. up with the Golden Belt people that looking for me. Yeah, we've tried to uh, we've tried to get that done, but it, I don't know if Garmin's their own. They're pretty big. <laughs> yeah, they 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 know better. I don't know why they wouldn't. I mean, Kansas just went through a statewide. You know, we're cleaning up data. I mean, we're doing 68 counties for the state of Kansas are in our list. So I mean, we have data, and it's all in the same format. Everything's. You know, we the state could just give it to them. I don't know. You think they lose it. business by trying to use it as much as they get messed up? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is you know, better. It didn't get you close. In my house, it didn't get you within a block of my house. It didn't get you within eight miles of my house. <laughs> oh, really? That yeah. far off? Boy, their their address range, their geocoding, whatever they're using to the geocode those points, it's not. They don't have very good geocode tool. Is what it is. But, but anyway, um, it'll take fest uh, June 1st. I didn't really plan on coming in here, but I did have a signature page for you guys and since I met Jeff in the hall. <laughs> and he was coming in anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and then we can make a copy of this. Different than what Carl does? The um, GIS stuff? Well, the, uh, <laughs> I mean, we've done it through all this. Just 10 minutes ago. Yeah, I think I'm going to talk to him. Uh, uh, Carl uses AutoCAD. It's not a format that's usable for the state. Um, so, we did give him, we did deliver him the address file. You have to have you have to be using the SRI products, and it's called ArcMap, and uh, the data when you deliver it to the state has to be in a certain format. They have to keep it. I mean, I don't want to bore you with this, but there's a lot of topology, so no gaps, overlaps uh, in between 
boundaries, ESM boundaries, which is the fire law uh, EMS. That's also when the when the call comes in, it tells dispatch what fire department call, what law enforcement office call, and what ambulance to dispatch. So, and all those have to be in a. Uh, uh, the data has to be maintained in a certain way to, in order for the state to accept it. So, what about this compared to like the pictometry? Uh, pictometry, um, that's right, you guys have pictometry. Uh -huh. um, we have photography. The state, the whole, the state flew the whole state campus last year at a one foot pixel resolution. Um, that's pretty much what we use to uh, adjust the center lines. And uh, pictometry has a uh, piece of software that works inside of uh, ArcMap, that pictometry won't work in dispatch. It's on, it, this, the dispatch software is not built to work with pictometry. But they do have, pictometry is an oblique image, so you get the, they can measure the sides of buildings, and, and they do have an ortho, which is straight up and down. Um, we could use that ortho image inside of the uh, dispatch with their the mapping. But, can't use the oblique stuff. I mean, yeah, yeah. The, I wonder if you ever did talk to Carl before we sent him this and see whether any of that stuff would work or not. You want to look at it too? I mean, if you got to him first. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. I'd like to research, I mean, just yeah. and to see what our options are with, mm -hmm. with the pictometry and what. I don't understand it. <laughs> That's right. why I'm asking. Right. So, right. I mean, it might seem like elementary questions because we just went through this with Carl. And it's right. Like, how many GSI people do we deal with? GIS. GIS. Yeah, Pictometry is an aerial yes. photography company. We are a, uh, uh, that works with GIS data, that what, that what we do. Um, and it will work with. I mean, it will work, but the, the centerline file and the address points and all that will, will work inside of pictometry software. But it won't work in what the dispatch, uh, the statewide system, it, it's not something that works inside that. It may work outside of it. There may be a way for them to interface with it later on where Dispatch could be looking at buildings and the, the, the bleeding images. That's kind of what we were told on pictometry when we talked about it. That, yeah. Hey, they can tell you to go to such and such an address and you're going to have to climb over a five foot tall fence. And, mm -hmm. Remember yeah. that? Mm -hmm. Well, I think you could, but you'd have to be pretty quick on the mouse. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you'd have to be pretty quick on the. Yeah, I don't think it'll, it won't interface with the, with the new state system. I, this is almost possibly better. I wonder if Randy can. Get it on a separate computer. You can put it on a different computer. Um, because it, we were told we could use it on our laptop. Yeah, 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 you could probably, yeah, you can use it on your laptop. But I guess what I'm saying is the call's going to come in. It's going to, right. when, when the call comes in, it's going to uh, uh, route you to that location. So in pictometry, you would have to, uh, whatever the address was, you'd have to type that in search it in pictometry additionally and then it would take them to that. It wouldn't it wouldn't do it simultaneously. Right. right. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, there's no there's no interface that's gonna allow for uh, pictometry to right. actually go and search that address at the same time that, that the map's coming up. I mean you'll you'll get the photography that the state flew and really, you guys had some photography anyway, some uh, six inch pixel county light photography back in 2009. We just had some in January, didn't we? March. March. Well, well, that was pixel That was pixel yeah. 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 yeah, that was pixel yeah. 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 But the dispatcher could get on it separately while these guys are in route. They could, right. they could help. Yeah, if yeah. you didn't have something else to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> but the, I mean, time is yeah. essence. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we got we can't yeah any type and yeah. Well, you guys can do, but I would think the dispatcher could look that stuff up while mm -hmm. you're in route and say yeah. Right. I mean, you yeah, know, I'm talking about the original call though. Right. Yeah. yeah. It needs to be yeah. Yeah, the original call would show up on the mapping in a place that it's part of the uh, same program. Scott and Randall will come out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very good. So you got Lawrence and him? So, Scott. I'm going to uh, go and talk to Carl. So. All right, thanks. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Um, and I, I wanted to hear their opinion of us closing that and what, if you had any ideas about what you would do. <laughs> End up just going back like we was before you had it and we took care of it and didn't have to, actually I think it would be a little bit simpler because they got people that's calling you, and then they're calling him, and then they're calling me, and trying to find out where the car is, and all that kind of stuff. And then, then also it turns around if it's a wreck, it's insurance people are looking for it. And then they want to get in there and get their stuff out of it, or something like that. So it's a constant hassle. Mm -hmm. I like it being there, but uh, I don't think it's the right way to do, because it's... Well, I get calls on ones that he puts in there, you know, basically, and I'm sure he gets some from me. And we're all running around with them. And you have to find the keys for the lock? Or? Oh, yeah. Well, I got enough trouble with keys. <laughs> but, uh, what problems were you having that made him go back or go to the county impact lot? I mean, there had to be a reason. I was there before and I didn't know we had a problem, but they decided to do it. Oh. I think, as I remember, um, this has been quite a few years ago, there was a record service out of Stafford. And the, I think the complaint was that he wasn't getting his money out of people that he picked cars up, whether it's an arrest or a wreck or whatever. So the county decided that they would pay in advance. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. the trash service. Yeah. Well, so that's what we do. We pay. My office yeah. pays. Right. But, so that these guys don't. Yeah. But that's, that was started whenever we inherited the impound lot. So. You have no complaints on my end on that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, and guys, when you think about it, a lot of these people, they're just dumping these cars. Yeah. I'm going to give you a for instance here that has nothing to do with you guys, <clears throat> but honest to God, Sonny Wellston told a person here in this town when they had one to clean up the town, he said, well, I don't have a title. He said, we'll just go park it on the street and we'll have a tow. I think it's still in the impound. It is. And I mean, uh, well, Stafford's done that too. Oh yeah, when they cleaned up, uh, we got two of them in there from there. So, that's my consensus. I like that pay. Now, <laughs> I guess uh, my question is, and, and maybe you guys don't have any interest in doing that, but. When we get that cleaned out, I mean, are you interested in paying to put stuff in there, or are you going to put it at your own place, or? 
Yeah. I'd be you interested in, in, uh, in an operational of it as far as that goes. I have provisions to go somewhere else, yes. Okay. You know, which works. I mean, if you need a lot for something else, Kelly. I can I can handle it. Well, there's but, probably times where you have to keep the new building shape. Well, if we do it for evidence, I get a hold of Philip and we put it inside a locked shop. building. Yeah. Because we can't just leave evidence there and mm -hmm. climb over the fence. But the, the one thing I. Uh, we have two trailers in there that we, it's not evidence, but we keep storage in. I'd sure like to keep them, but other than that, I'd like to just clean it all out. Be done with it. I'm a favor of that. You got a place to go with it, Scott? Yes, I do as well. Okay. I mean, I'm just, like he said, I would entertain the motion of uh, using that facility, taking care of it, or I've got my own place to do it as well. I think we're going to clear it out and you know not have any vehicles in there except for the trailer, what you need, because I think they can utilize that space for something else. I do know as well that Phillip's getting kind of grumpy about all the stuff in the county yard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's maybe just it being grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> but how often do you have the vehicles that you have to have locked up? Probably it's every two or three years. Yeah, you know, not very often. Yeah. And so it's not that I both have uh, enclosed buildings that they could be put in. Yeah, you know, secure storage. We've done that too. We, we have. We've done it when you at your old place. Mm -hmm. So I mean that's not a problem there. If you need some that they need to finish up the next day or something like that, that's not an issue. We can make that available to them, either one of us. And uh, I'm good with that. Yeah. Let's clean it out. Clean it out. Yes, that is a session. <laughs> Motion the second we'll place David. Clean it up. Clean it up. Be done with it. Clean up the lot. For the county to be out of the yeah, county yeah. business. Yeah. You lack the people. <laughs> <laughs> and to reserve the area for the use of um, um, the sheriff's trailers, you said? For county use. For county use, use yes. All in favor, say aye. 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 Should carry. Aye. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Well. Good luck with your new venture. <laughs> Thanks a lot. And Jeff, I told you before, if you need some help cleaning that up, just holler. We'll get okay. something. We'll do it. There's a lot of it that we can't sell. So. Right. How many vehicles are in there? I mean, there's, it's full. Yeah. I mean, we got room inside the gate for one, and if they don't come and get it, we don't have any room. But so far, we've just been lucky enough. How many that, vehicles do you guess are in there? Then? Oh. Probably what 30? 30 to 40. And, and actually, there's room in there, but everything's just yeah. different directions. So, well, and there's stuff in there that's well, like the Winnebago that burn up, and and it's clear in the back, so you can't get to it till you get these others, and then you get new ones, and you gotta wait six months to sell them, and then you get new ones, and they get stacked in there. So basically, there was never no organization when that stuff was put in there, right. and it was just however we could get it in there, it got put there, and then it's been left set that way. So if it, actually, if it was organized, there would be room in there. But well, how many varmints are back there? A lot. Plenty. <laughs> I went in last an, year and cut all the trees an, out of it that I could get to. It's another good reason to get rid of it. Yeah. The neighborhood is probably like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Very good. Yeah. Thanks. And the fingerprint machine is up and going, and everything's working. So, good deal. Yeah. We have to keep that locked now because there's well, there's information on that computer of arrests, and some of them are juveniles, so we have to keep that book and door locked. So, we all have a key for that. Uh, 
Yeah, I better not get any more. I know, I've heard it before. <laughs> so I guess we're still on for 1 o'clock. I haven't heard anything different. Okay, yeah. Chauvet is supposed to be out, so. I don't know. There's the, it's the lady from Topeka, from the historical oh, registration, is coming out to look at the Martin Cemetery. I won't be able to sit on me there, but I won't be able to make that today. I will try if my crop insurance adjuster doesn't show up at that point. Because she's just got to do an on site inspection. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll be around. Jeff says if he needs us, he'll call me. Right. Thank you. See ya. Yeah. What else do we have? Yeah. Can you talk about can you pull off? Yeah. Can you do that today? Phil said it would save us twenty thousand dollars approximately to close that road and just do it. And he wanted consensus from us if that's what we wanted to do and let him know today was he's at a meeting with John Riggins, I guess, and he would like to. I've been in favor of that from the get go, just from even saving time from completing it, let alone 20 grand. It's 20 grand. Yeah. The locals will know what yeah. roads to take, oh, but as yeah. far as the yeah. others, they can do the Leesburg Road in Midwest and come back in. Or even the dirt road a mile east or west and around. Yeah. I told him that that was probably the case, but that he wanted consensus from us and have me to call him today. Okay. So it's the consensus to close the road? Yes. yes. And he's got to redo the contract so they can. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, they're still on schedule? Yes. And that will speed the time. Well, we'll have to cut it in half. Yeah. yeah. That'll be yeah. a good deal, too. Run in two weeks. I mean, run in a month. Not two weeks. We'll do a better job, but it's a win win situation just to shut her down. Minutes and tax rolls. And oh, man. Yeah. All right. Move that we approve the tax roll corrections. Second. Motion to second approve the tax roll corrections. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Just one. Just one. Uh, Motion second. I move we approve the minutes from the April 29th meeting. Second. Motion to second approve the minutes of April 29th. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion to second. 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 Motion to